Okay, so let's talk about virtue addicts. So uh, the first thing to say is to make this distinction between knowledge that versus knowledge how. So how can I know that the Earth is spherical or that 2 plus 2 equals 4 and so on? All of that is knowledge that, knowledge of a certain proposition, a proposition like the Earth is spherical or 2 plus 2 equals 4, and you get justification that proves that proposition. But I can also know how to swim or speak English or play left fielder. My knowledge of how to swim need not involve any knowledge of propositions or truths about swimming. It's just that I that if you push me into the pool, I instinctively know the right things to swim. So virtue ethics is based upon the idea that moral knowledge is know-how rather than knowledge that. Being a good human being is having the skill or ability to live a human life well rather than knowing some moral rule is true. Being a good at friendship or flirting or writing a good joke or poem isn't knowledge that, a set of rules that you can be told and follow and be a good friend or be good at flirting, etc. because you follow those rules. But a skill or knowledge how, more like knowing how to swim. You just have matured and learned and been shaped by experience to be able to do this this thing, swim or be a good friend or flirt, etc. Uh, which neither you nor anyone else can give rules for how to do. So for example, flirting. Um, it's not like I can take somebody who's awkward and unable to flirt and give them some sort of list of rules to follow that if they memorize and then force themselves to follow, they're all of a sudden good at this. This is, this is a skill, a skill that's taught through experience and maturity and being shaped by experiences. And maybe on dates, you don't learn the right experiences and you're, you're, it's, it, you never learn how to flirt, but like, this is a skill that if things go right, you do get good at. So I, ha I always use this example of uh, from Scrubs of Three Date Reed, right? With Reed, Dr. Reed has this, she says, I'm Three Date Reed, you know, I sleep with my date on the third date, one more than the prudes, one less than the sluts, you know, this, as if the standard was something that could be codified into some sort of rule, right? If you go too far on an early date, if you sleep with someone too early in a relationship, that is not something which can be codified into a rule that you can follow in that sort of way. You have to, I mean, the, the way that develop, relationships develop are, are very organic and unique. And uh, when it's appropriate to move to the next step is something that is unique to every relationship and something that you will do well if you are a skilled at human life and that you will do poorly and do too early or too late and screw things up if you are bad at human life and there is no such thing as you know the three date rule that dr reed tries to follow in scrubs another example is you know crafting a joke or a poem i like to use this example like being able to craft a joke for a stand-up routine you know you there is no rules that you can give somebody for being a good comedian. This is definitely a skill that you develop. You become the sort of person who can think of creative ideas, respond to ideas, be self-critical in the right sorts of ways, think of funny ideas, test them out in audiences, realize they're not working, get your timing right. All of that, I think, takes uh, a ton of skill rather than knowledge that. And the virtue of this is wants to say all of human life, being a good human being, being good at human life depends on skill rather than uh, propositional knowledge. So uh, one of the things I want to talk about is this. If you if you watch YouTube videos and one of them that I have suggested is about machine learning and neural networks, you know, this is one of the reasons I signed for you to watch this video about machine learning and neural networks. These show how people can do 
they can and do build machines to do things without knowing how how to program the machines to do them right they don't know the rules of them they they build machines to test machines and create some sort of program that somehow produces the right result that has the right skill but it's not codifiable into a set of rules that you could program a machine to do there is a right answer and somehow the machine or neural network is built to have that uncodifiable ability but to come to the right answer but it's not through I mean, because it's unco uncodifiable, it's not through programming it to follow a rule. It's through adjusting and tweaking the neural network to just produce the right result somehow. This is similar to virtue ethics. Virtue ethicists think that there is a right answer about what to do in different complicated cases, but having the ability to take in information, weigh that information, and come to the right result doesn't involve a moral rule that people follow, but having the right setup for producing the right result. The videos about machine learning and neural networks show how something or someone can be skilled at doing the right thing, getting the right answer, without there being a codifiable rule that determines the right answer. Uh, another aspect of virtue ethics is value pluralism. So, you know, there's lots of values, important things that we think that are a part of a life and that you can encounter in the world, like happiness, free choice, beauty, truth, honesty, courage, gumption, etc. In any given situation, different moral values will probably be pulling you in different directions. The skill of being able to take in those values in your particular situation and make the right judgment about what to do is not something that is codifiable into some rule, says the virtue ethicist but rather is some form of knowledge how, which if you've been raised well, matured, lived through some successes and failures, you might have been shaped correctly to have the skill to navigate correctly. That is, by how you've been raised and your experiences, you might be shaped to become good at dealing with and being able to think through to the correct decision in any situation. Uh, virtue ethicists talk a lot about this concept of eudaimonia. A key concept in virtue ethics is eudaimonia. The, in past, this word was commonly translated as happiness, but over time it's become obvious how terrible of a translation this is. A better translation of eudaimonia is flourishing or thriving. People don't use the word thriving as a translation enough, I, I don't think. They, they, flourishing is pretty common, but thriving is not. I think thriving is a really good translation of what eudaimonia is is supposed to get at. Someone who has the skills to navigate human life, awkward social interactions, relationships, friendships, dangerous situations, all of it, is someone who possesses the abilities that enable them to flourish or thrive at human life. They can have a good human life through a combination of some luck and their own mature ability to skillfully navigate human life well. Well, when this happens, a person achieves what virtue ethicists call eudaimonia. They thrive at human life or flourish as a human being. I find the best way to think about the concept of eudaimonia is to think about the sort of life you wish for your child. You want for them not just to lead a pleasant, happy life, but to be mature human beings who achieve both material success and also do so partly because of how skilled at human life they've grown to be. You don't want your children just to be happy, douchebags, or happy because they've inherited wealth and that brings fake friends and easy accomplishment. You want them to succeed at life through their own maturity and character, to be good at human life and in virtue of their maturity to succeed at human life. Uh, Another important aspect is this notion of a good of a kind. Virtue ethicists generally argue that there is a deep connection between the way we talk about tools or plants or other animals as being good instances of their kind and moral goodness. For virtue ethicists, when you think about moral goodness, we are concerned with what it takes to be a good human being and achieve a good human life. What it takes to be a good instance of the kind of thing we are, namely a human being. Human beings are unique in that we are rational agents. What we, we take in information about our situation and judge what's best to do. Being a good human being is being skilled at doing that. 
these skills and that being taking information, making judgments correctly. These skills are what the virtue ethicist calls virtues, hence the name of the moral theory, virtue ethics. Skills which cannot be captured by rules or knowledge that, but which you must come to possess as knowledge how. Uh, one contrast that helps us understand virtue ethics is its contrast with ethical egoism. The ethical egoist maintains that we only have reason to do what maximizes our own subjective happiness and internal feelings of satisfaction and fulfillment. That is what we all aim at, says the ethical egoist, is the maximization of these feelings and what is best for us. The virtue ethicist disagrees. We all aim at what is a good human life, eudaimonia, to thrive and flourish as a human being, to be mature and skilled at living human life, and by our skill succeed at human life. A rich, self-absorbed, narciss narcissistic douchebag might be happy and fulfilled, and so might someone living in a fantasy in the Matrix or Nozick's experience machine, but that's not what we aim for. We aim to be actually successful in the real world in virtue of our own maturity and skill at navigating human life to be good human beings i.e skill at human life and living a good human life because of our skill at navigating human life uh, virtue ethics is not relativistic individuals can be objectively good or bad at human life and there are objective right and wrong decisions to make in particular situations it is it's just that there is no rule that sorts right and wrong answers. Rather, it takes know-how or skill to navigate particular situations. For example, Michael Scott and Dwight Schrute from The Office are bad at making the right call in situations where Jim Halpert and Karen Filippelli are good at navigating human life. Furthermore, virtue ethicists aren't talking about the skills needed to be good, a good American or a good Iranian, but the universal basic skills which any human life calls upon us to have. Friendship may take a different form from culture to culture, but the maturity and skill to navigate the hurdles of friendship in human life are generally are general and really always the same. So in the end, what does virtue ethics tell us to do? Do what the virtuous person would do. Be like them. Uh, this sounds empty. But presumably, we can all kind of make sense of it if we connect it, that this dictum to our own lives. Think of the most put together and mature person you know, the person who always knows how to diffuse an awkward situation, how to show respect to others and be a good friend and deal with dangerous situations. That person is good at human life and you should do and be like them. They aren't following a rule, it's just who they are. They are a well-tuned human being who is skilled at living human life. So let's talk about some problems for virtue ethics. One is that it posits the existence of moral luck, right? So you could just be really unlucky, have bad examples, bad experiences, and never come to be a well-tuned human being and skilled at living human life due to no fault of your own. You could also just be so poor and famine-stricken that there's you're so busy just trying to survive day to day, it's not like you're gonna mature to be a skilled human being. On top of that, like no matter how good and bad you are at human life, if you're living in an extreme condition of famine, you're just gonna have a shitty life. So being a successful human being depends on luck, both because the sort of examples and encouragement and, and lessons you take from experience and genetics and upbringing that it takes to be a good human being and not be a defective human being is a matter of luck. And on top of that, you can just be in such terrible situations that even no matter how skilled you are, you're fucked and you're living in a famine stricken situation where you're just going to die young and miserable and without any sort of material happiness or length to your life. Like moral luck can determine, maybe not your blameworthiness, not your responsibility, but whether you're a defective or successful or, or good human being and whether your life is a successful or a failure as a human being. There's the other worries that virtue ethics seems to fail to be action guiding or to provide answers to moral questions. Uh, this objection seems to object 
and re res uh, respond to this whole, like, just throw out this whole virtue ethicist position that ethics has to be rule skill-based as opposed to rule-based and, and to demand, hey, hey, virtue ethicist, the, you can't just say, oh, it's just skill-based and if you're virtuous, you'll know the right answer. You know, that's not an answer to the th theorizing about ethics. You need to actually give us a rule and prove it. Th you can object to the whole idea that this even succeeds as a moral theory because it doesn't seem like it gives answers. It just sort of appeals to a skill you're supposed to have. And if you have it, you'll be able to produce the right answers. Lastly, um, even agreeing that I'm a human being, what reason do I have to care about living up to being a good human being? Like, say the virtue of this is right. I'm a human being. There's some sort of objective standard as to what a good human being is. Why the fuck do I have to care? I can just reject that. I might be born in Nazi Germany and thereby be a citizen of Nazi Germany. Does that give me reason to live up to what I am and be a good Nazi citizen? No. So being born this biological creature, a human being, why do I have to live up to the standards of what a human being is supposed to be? I'm a fr I'm, I'm, I have a free will. I can choose to live contrary to what a human life is supposed to be. Why, what reason has the virtue of this has given me to try being a good human being? Despite, sure, that's what I am, whatever. I'm also an American by birth. I don't need to live up to being a good American. I need reasons to live up to these standards and, and the virtue ethicist seems to not provide that.